Welcome to D&D Builds, where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons & Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. Today, we're going to be jumping into the semi-villainous side of the MCU and building Loki. I put this up for a vote on my Patreon, and they voted Loki should be the next Marvel character I build on this channel. So if you want to have more input onto what I build on my channel, or access to the character sheets, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below where you can get access to all of that and be just as incredibly awesome as these people. And a very special thanks to Kilo Kilo, my very first Dungeon Master level patron, which means I'll be DMing a D&D session for them soon. If you want to chat more about D&D stuff, we have a link to the Discord down below as well, but now let's jump right into the build. First things first, we gotta pick a race. And while we did already build Thor and we picked a particular race that aligned well with being a god, Loki is more of an adopted brother to Thor and not really biological. While Loki was raised by Asgardians, he was born amongst the Frost Giants. And the most giant-like race we can get is Goliath. They naturally get a bonus to the ability scores in strength and constitution, but in the more recent books for D&D, they allowed you to modify this sort of racial ability score increase. Specifically citing that just because you're part of a particular race in Dungeons and Dragons, that doesn't mean you might not be some sort of outsider. And considering Loki was taken away at a very, very young age, and raised by the Asgardians, I can't think of a situation that applies better than that. So we will reallocate those points when we get to the stats. This race also grants you the athletic skill, as well as stones endurance, allowing you to shrug off some injury, and that makes sense considering you take quite a few blows. You also get languages in common and giant, which of course makes sense, but one of the most perfect features of this race is mountain born. This gives you resistance to cold damage, and considering you were born a frost giant, this is absolutely perfect. When it comes to choosing a background, we're gonna grab noble because obviously you are among the nobility of Asgard, even if you are an adopted son. This grants you skill proficiencies in history and persuasion, as well as one type of gaming set and one language. The language we're gonna grab here is celestial because that seems to align the best with being an Asgardian. Next up, we have to pick a class. While there is a trickery domain of cleric, which could be fun to play with, that's actually more about work worshipping a god of mischief or trickery, and you are the god of mischief. So we don't really need to go cleric. Loki does use a ton of spells, mostly as far as illusion and enchantment. So we could go with something like a wizard and being an enchantment or illusion specialist, but I don't think Loki really relies on the intelligence so heavily. He's more of a charismatic character. So that leaves us with a few other options. Warlock could be a good choice. He does try to make deals with a lot of people, which we could play off as being a pact, but he doesn't really stick to those. He tends to be a bit more of a backstabber. So we're gonna ditch Warlock and Sorcerer is much more about blasting and that's not his style either. So we're gonna go with Bard. And now that we've sorted out which class we're gonna go with, let's dive into some stats. As far as the strength, we're gonna go ahead and dump that because that's not really Loki's forte. And then Dexterity, we're gonna put 14. He is fairly nimble, but it's still not exactly his strong suit. Then when it comes to Constitution, we're gonna bring that to 13, and then you get another plus one from being a Goliath. When it comes to Intelligence, Loki does have some smarts, but it's not what he relies on most of the time. So we're gonna put 12 points into Intelligence, giving us a plus one to our modifier. Then we're gonna take our Wisdom, bump it up to 12, just because we want a little bit of help with our insight skill, which is our ability to read the intentions of other people. Then our main stat we really want to focus on is charisma. So we're going to put 14 points into charisma and then get plus two from being a Goliath. That plus two would have gone towards strength, but this is where we're going to reallocate it. Being the god of mischief, he heavily relies on being able to convince people of things, and that's a very charismatic ability. Not to mention the overall portrayal of Loki, especially by Tom Hiddleston, was so incredibly well done and so charismatic that they just had to keep bringing him back. And I don't know what applies better than a high charisma score. With all the stats sorted out, let's dive into our level one of Bard. At level one, you get access to light armor, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, and short swords, but you mostly rely on a staff or a dagger. You also get three musical instruments of your choice, but that doesn't matter too much. 
you get saving throws and dexterity and charisma, and then you get to choose any three skills that you want. And we're gonna go as purely influential as possible, grabbing deception and intimidation, because you definitely know how to do some intimidating. Then with the last skill, we're gonna make sure you understand people's influences a bit more. So we're gonna grab insight. Also at level one of Bard, you get Bardic Inspiration, allowing you to inspire somebody else with a D6 die. You can use this a number of times equal to your charisma modifier, and that D6 gets upgraded as you level up in Bard. The last thing you get at level one is some spell casting. The majority of the spell casting we're going to rely on is going to be either illusion or enchantment to really stick with the Loki theme. And keeping that in mind, the first cantrip we're going to grab is minor illusion. You're going to make good use of this being Loki. Then the other starting cantrip we're going to grab is vicious mockery, which is just basically insulting somebody so much it causes them a headache. You can also learn four spells at this level. So we're going to grab charm person to influence people a bit more, disguise self for obvious reasons. Dissonant whispers because it's really about whispering just the right thing to influence people and Silent Image, leaning more into that illusion. At level two of Bard, you get Jack of all trades, meaning you're pretty good at most skills, even if you are better in something you've actually had a bit more practice in. You also get Song of Rest, allowing you and your allies to get a bit more rest whenever you take any sort of short rest. Lastly, at second level, you get one more spell. So we're gonna grab the infamous Silvery Barbs, essentially allowing you to cause disadvantage on one person and advantage on another, just doing some magical distraction. At third level of Bard, you get Expertise, Piece, allowing you to choose two skills and double the proficiency bonus you get to them. So we're definitely going to boost up persuasion and deception, really leaning into those influential skills. And you get to select a bard college or a subclass. While there could be a case made for College of Eloquence or Glamour, I think College of Whispers is what works best. This entire college is focused on whispering in just the right ears to influence the right people into doing the right things for you. When you choose this subclass, you get access to Psychic Blade blades, making your weapon attacks toxic to a creature's mind. So when you hit them with a weapon, expending one of your bardic inspiration and dealing an additional 2d6 psychic damage when you hit that target. Additionally, at this level, you get words of terror. When you're trapped alone with one other person and you just get to hang out and talk to them, you can attempt to seed paranoia and fear into that person's mind. This is all about just having a conversation and working it just the way you want it to go. Black Widow was able to pull this off pretty well, but I think Loki should be able to do it pretty well too. Lastly, at this level, you can learn one more spell and you get access to the second level spell slots. So we're gonna grab Suggestion because this really just allows you to suggest something and people just kind of believe it. You are, of course, a master at lying and convincing people of things. Then at fourth level, you get an ability score improvement. So we're gonna boost up our charisma by two points and you get to learn one more cantrip and one more spell. The cantrip we're gonna grab is Mind Sliver because it's another mental related mess with somebody's head kind of cantrip. And the spell we're gonna learn is Mirror mirror image. This lasts for a minute and just makes a mirror duplicate of yourself, making it really hard for you to hit, which is really going to be helpful because you don't have a lot of dexterity helping out your armor class. Then at fifth level, your bardic inspiration die gets increased from a d6 to a d8. You also get font of inspiration, making it a bit easier to regain those bardic inspiration dice because now you can get it back on a short rest. Lastly, you learn one more spell and you get access to third level spell slots. I really wanted to go with motivational speech because that feels like something Loki would be really, really good at, but you're more of a loner. So we'll go with the exact opposite and do enemies abound, really getting your enemies to fight each other. I was actually in a campaign that used this and in the most hilarious way possible because they used it on some werewolves. But the thing with werewolves is that they don't take damage unless it's from a magical attack, but they don't do magical attacks. So they were just swiping at each other back and forth without actually doing any damage, and they were just distracted endlessly. At level 6 of Bard, you get Counter Charm, allowing you to disrupt mind-influencing effects only if you choose to. And from your College of Whispers, you get Mantle of Whispers. So if another person dies within 30 feet of you, you can magically capture their shadow, allowing you to disguise yourself as them. Which is a little creepy, but it's definitely something that Loki might be willing to pull off. I mean, he did kind of carve somebody's eye out. So I think disguising himself as a dead person is not far out of the realm of possibility. Then lastly, you can learn one more spell. And I was super tempted to grab Feign Death 
considering all of the times that Loki kind of seems to die, but doesn't really. But with the way this works in D&D, it's not quite as useful unless you're trying to pull off some crazy trick with multiple party members. And as we've mentioned, Loki's a bit more of a loner. So instead, we're going to grab Major Image, leaning even more heavily into those illusions. At 7th level, you learn one more spell and you get access to a 4th level spell slot. So we're going to grab the tried and true Confusion, just allowing you to confuse your enemies a bit, which is definitely something Loki would do plenty of. At 8th level, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to max out our charisma with another two points. Additionally, you get to learn one more spell, so we're going to do a little better than Charm Person and grab Charm Monster so you can be a bit more charming to every type of species. At 9th level of Bard, you get an upgrade to your Song of Rest, boosting a bit more of the health of your party whenever they take a short rest, and you get to learn one more spell while also getting access to a 5th level spell slot. So we're going to grab the spell Mislead. While there are objectively better spells to take at this level, this is the most true to character. It's a bit situational, but it's all about kind of making a duplicate, swapping places with them, all that stuff exactly what Loki would pull off. It allows you to turn invisible while creating an illusory double of yourself, which just becomes super, super convincing. At 10th level of Bard, your Bardic Inspiration gets increased from a D8 to a D10, and you get expertise in two more skills. Considering you already have expertise in Deception and Persuasion at this level, we're going to grab Intimidation and Insight. So you really understand what people want, and you can really intimidate the crap out of people. You also get one more cantrip at this level, so we're going to grab Friends, because you are pretty good at making friends, even if you're not great at holding on to them. And then you get to learn two more spells at this level, and that's especially helpful because also you get the feature Magical Secrets, allowing you to grab spells from any possible spell list. Usually you'd probably want to grab something that's a bit more damage dealing if you're just going with a normal build, but we're trying to stay true to character with Loki. So just to make you a little harder to hit considering your low armor class and how much you're able to dodge and make illusions and stuff, we're going to grab Blur, making you really, really hard to hit, forcing all attacks against you to be at disadvantage, which we're going to grab from the wizard spell list, and we're going to grab Incite Greed, because there's no better way to try to corrupt somebody than by making them really greedy. Then at 11th level of Bard, you get to learn one more spell, and you get access to a 6th level spell slot. So we're going to upgrade our Suggestion spell to Mass Suggestion, so you can speak to an entire crowd and influence all of them at once. At 12th level of Bard, you get another Ability Score improvement, and we're going to boost up our Constitution. Usually, you might want to lean towards Dexterity to avoid getting hit and getting a better armor class, but we already have a ton of spells to help with that, so boosting our constitution helps with our concentration checks just in case we do get hit. Then at 13th level of Bard, your Song of Rest gets upgraded from a D8 to a D10, and you get to learn one more spell, which can now be up to 7th level spell slot. So we're going to lean into more illusions and grab Project Image. This is very similar to Mislead, but it doesn't make you invisible at the same time, which is a bit of a downside. However, it can be a bit more useful long term because it can last up to a day and it has a 500 mile cast range, which is absolutely insane, but it allows you to do some really tricky stuff if you put some thought into it. Then at 14th level of Bard, you get to learn some more magical secrets, allowing you more access to another class's spell list, and you get to learn two more spells when you do this. There's not a ton of spells that you don't already have access to that would fit super well with Loki, so we're going to lean a bit more into the items that Loki would either have in his possession or might want to have. So we're going to grab Plane Shift, so you can travel from Asgard to Midgar with ease, and we'll get Loki something he always wanted, a crown. We're going to grab the spell Crown of Stars. We can play this off as something you stole from Odin's vault, but really, if it's a crown, Loki would want it. I mean, anybody that rocks those massive horns, I can't expect they would ever turn down any sort of spell that would access them a crown, especially one made of stars. It's one of the few hardcore attack spells that are now in the arsenal, but it's pretty damn powerful and it's fun to play with. You summon a crown of stars on your head and then as a bonus action, you can just send those stars out and do some damage. Also at this level, you get one more feature from being a College of Whispers bard and you get Shadow Lore. This allows you to weave dark magic into your words and completely corrupt somebody for eight hours. This is really like having the staff that Loki had in the first Avengers movie and how he completely corrupted Hawkeye and had complete influence over him. Then at 15th level of Bard, your Bardic Inspiration gets increased from a D10 to a D12, which is the best you're going to get. 
and you get access to one more spell, which can now be up to eighth level spell slot. While there are a few more powerful spells you could go with, considering you want to be the absolute master manipulator, there's no better spell to go with than glibness. This makes you the ultimate liar, and there's no way we can avoid grabbing it, even though it definitely wouldn't be considered optimized if you needed some more damage output. But it is pretty powerful when it comes to social situations, because it lasts for an hour, doesn't require concentration, and whenever you make a charisma check, you can replace any number you roll with a 15. Additionally, no matter what you say, magic that would determine if you're telling the truth indicates that you're being truthful. So you really are a master of deception. At 16th level, you get another ability score improvement. So we're going to boost our constitution again, because you are practically a god, even though you're more of a giant, but you know, that's just the fine details. Then at 17th level, your Song of Rest gets upgraded from a D10 to a D12, which is the best it's going to get. And you get to learn one more spell, which can now be all the way up to ninth level spell slot. As far as the options we have available to us, I think Psychic Scream is going to be the best. While it does do a lot of damage, which isn't our main focus with this build, the important part is that your words are so intense, it stuns everyone around. Then at 18th level, you get more magical secrets, allowing you to access other classes' spell lists, and you can learn two more spells. So just to prevent you from dying in the MCU, and it's something you definitely somehow try and pull out of your back pocket for some random deus ex machina kind of reason, we're going to grab the spell Invulnerability, basically making you invincible for a short period of time. The other level 9 spell we're going to grab is Shape Change. This allows you to turn into a snake to mess with your brother, or if you just want to go ahead and be full-blown alligator Loki, you can do that. But as an alternative, if you didn't want to mess with too much Shape Change stuff, since you already have plenty of illusions, you could, as an alternative, go with a different spell. Foresight, which basically gives you advantage at everything and anybody doing anything against you, disadvantage. It can really boost you in a lot of situations, and frankly, it's one of my favorite spells, even if it's very simple. But if you want to play this up a little more, just think of it as you having that Marvel Universe version of a time turner and getting a little more insight into what's about to happen, just rewinding things a little bit for one particular enemy. Then at 19th level, you get another ability score improvement, so we're finally going to max out our constitution because really, we have so many spells to avoid getting hit, there's no point in wasting it on dexterity. This will help out your health as much as you can really get, while at the same time being able to concentrate even better on any spell that you have active. Then at 20th level, you get superior inspiration, just making sure that you always have some uses of your bardic inspiration. This build is definitely more focused on social situations, so it's not going to be super useful if you're in a very combat heavy campaign, but this will make you super charismatic and the absolute best face for a party, allowing you to absolutely dominate any social situation you're in, so you'll still be pretty damn useful as long as you talk your way out of it. Let me know what you think of this build in the comments down below, whether you think it sucks or if there's something major that I missed. Don't be afraid to let me know because I try and read as many of those comments as possible. This build was requested in the comments, so if you have any other suggestions, let me know down there as well because I use those suggestions and sometimes I'll either just go for it or I'll have my patrons vote on it like I did with this one. I put a vote up on Patreon and let them vote on what the next Marvel build would be and this was the overwhelming choice with 80% of the vote. If you want to have a bit more influence and do that voting or if you want access to the character sheets for this build or any of my other builds, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below where you can access to all of that and be just as incredibly awesome as these people. And a very special thanks to Kilo Kilo, my very first dungeon master level patron, which means I'll be DMing a D&D &D session for them soon. And if you just want to chat a bit more about D&D &D or any of my builds, feel free to check out the other link in my description for my Discord. Finally, if you made it to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D &D session, especially if you want to play as the absolute master of deception and the god of mischief, Loki.